black owned bookstore. <laughs> and Stay parked there. Stay parked there. Come on in. And, and really the smart people, when they hear bookstore, they even make a decision. Do I got time to come up in here? That's what I That's what we said. <laughs> I can't just walk by by it. Right. So while we were getting prepared to walk to or get in a car, this man, I'm going to record you. <laughs> he yelled outside and said, this is a black owned bookstore. So we decided to go check it out. Give us a tour, Josephine. This is how we do it here, y'all. Welcome to 2518 Southeast 33rd. What's the name of your store? Uh, Third Eye Books, Accessories and Gifts. Oh, okay. Y'all from Portland or where y'all from? I just came from, LA, from Dallas. Probably. Dallas? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm also from Dallas, but live in Eugene. Okay. Now, Dallas, Oregon? Or Dallas, Texas. Texas? Okay. All right. Have you shown me? All right. And you, my man? I'm, I live here. You're the boy with the Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for stopping, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you for grabbing our attention. Oh, yeah. most definitely. And y'all don't have to buy anything, but I want y'all to tell everybody, though. Yes. This from our country. Oh, look. Well, we gotta get this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Look at these. Third Eye Bookstore, so we are local. It's our our queen. Power to the people. Well, we've been here since June. This is our second location. Yeah, we had another location before COVID, but okay. that got shut down and we had to bounce back and we relocated oh. right here. Okay, how has it gone so far? Oh, beautiful. The community, you know, we get to get three types of customers. Mm -hmm. We get one who embraces our store mm -hmm. and we get one who investigates our store because they've never been seen anything like this. Yeah. And we get third one who ignores our store and there's always the wild card. Okay. And stuff like that. So that's what I'm seeing here. But for most of our people have embracing it because there's nothing like this. Right. Yeah. Right. We appreciate it. I mean, we mm -hmm. sat down in the car and we're like, wait, what did he say? And then we're like, yeah, let's get out. <laughs> let's go check it out. So yeah, I knew good job. Sharp. I think y'all looking smart. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were saying we weren't supposed to park there or something. Nah, like that. nah. I just said we're a black owned bookstore. <laughs> and stay parked there. Stay yeah. parked there. Come on in. And, and really, the smart people, when they hear bookstore, they even make a decision. Do I got time to come up in here? That's what I That's what we said. <laughs> I can't just walk by, by it. Right. <laughs> and come back. So I had at least smart people know there's a bookstore here. Like I say, you don't yeah. have to buy anything. But what I want you to do yes. is tell the babies about this space. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that's the real big issue. We yeah. don't have words. Mm -hmm. Our yeah. kids use the same type of words every right. day. And if we expand those words to reading. Right. Stop reading the same thing and read other subjects, other matters, other lives and things like this. And then base it upon what you already have, a rich history. Because I tell people, we invented writing. Mm. We invented paper. We invented pen. I've been over to Egypt, Kemet. I've seen it on the walls. Wow. I've touched it. You know, I know the history of uh, some things. So, but what happened to during our enslavement process it was, it was met by death. And then so as we go forward, this ain't 400 years, people are still scared to read. I was telling some executives that a lot of their customers haven't read a book in 20 years. Why do you think that is? Because reading is too hard. People don't have time nowadays. And, or here it is. We got beat down in public schools so much a lot of black men don't read because they got laughed at mm. in front of groups of people. Right, shaming. So you did, but here it is. So, but I'm lyrics like da, 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 that's in front of every whole world. It's interesting, yeah. isn't it? It is. But when you had to read it, you know, little G -G -G -G, and you got ridiculed, and so you shut it down. And what I'm finding too is a lot of people have been reading what I think stuff that doesn't stimulate them to grow. It Facts. keeps it keeps them in place. It keeps them satisfied and mm -hmm. happy with what's going on. If I told you that white people control all our food, what are you going to do about it? 
So you have to read about it mm -hmm. to see how we did take control of that process. And I'm speaking in a bigger sense, but here it is. The white dominant society controls the food farmlands. We only got 1% black owned farmlands in the country, if that. Hmm. So just think if they start locking things down, really, right. access to food, you know, and me being on, on a nonprofit, the Black Food Co a Sovereignty Coalition, Black Features Farm, we have a couple farms in the community because we understand how food connects everything. Because mm -hmm. if you're hungry, you ain't going to read nothing and stuff like this. But I just want to yeah. highlight, you know, if anything, the work of this organization. The Portland Black Panthers. You know, real live organization. You might heard of the Black Panthers in the Oakland area. Mm -hmm. But these chapters were raised or sprung up all through the United States. The thing about this chapter, which is real interesting, they took care of people's teeth. Hmm. They had a free dental clinic. They were the only Black Panther chapter to have a dental clinic. Now, I'm going to ask y'all, if y'all tooth was hurting right now, would y'all be standing here and listen to me? No. No. <laughs> I wouldn't hear a word. No. Well, see, they addressed that need. Because they knew that people, got, if you don't talk, you got to have a good mouth. Right. And stuff like this, but all the other works and things like this. But 2518 Southeast 33rd is where we are at. Okay. www.thirdeyebag.com is the address on the all internet. Right. Do you have a card? Uh, definitely got cards. Uh, the big thing right now is Instagram. We almost are at 10,000 followers. It's an organic process. We don't buy nothing. Sweet. So follow us on Third Eye Bag on Instagram, Facebook, and stuff like this. Uh, I was just talking to the brother on there about doing more interactive things with other stores mm -hmm. and stuff like this. So tell me something about your podcast. So we are a mental health channel. Come on. Um, and it's myself and my other friend mm -hmm. who lives in Iowa. Her name is Tammy. She and I are both therapists and I'm okay. based here in okay. Oregon. She's based out there. So we have this channel and we're trying to promote mental health mm. um, in a bigger scale, on a bigger scale mm -hmm. and try to destigmatize it. Yes. So like, Black culture, we mm -hmm. don't really talk about our mental health. Mm -hmm. So I want to put that out there, mm -hmm. especially like Africans. And I see that you have this here. Uh -huh. We don't talk about mm -hmm. mental health, which I'm going to get this, by the okay. way. Check this out. I have a tattoo. Ghana, yeah, we're Ghanaian. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. So okay. seeing that is very amazing. Uh -huh. And so that's what the, the channel is about. Okay. We just really want to promote mental health out there because it doesn't reach mm. a lot of communities and people. Um, so we use... The internet. You have to. You have to. So do you reach people back in Ghana? A few family, a members. Few family members. Yeah. And stuff like this. <laughs> well, definitely Ghana is on my place. Yes. I, I tell everybody, if I visit the slave castle, I want to destroy it. Right. <laughs> it's not a tourist spot. It's been used as one. Mm -hmm. I think it still anchors us back in that time and period. Mm-hmm. I don't know who, why they want to keep those things there, because it's a, a small part of our history, small part. You have to ask yourself, why are those cannons pointed at the sea and not at the people in the land? Valid question. Because white people were fighting over us. Those cannons were to stop other white people from coming in to get us. You know, they weren't worried about Africans at sea coming. Come on in. So those, those are questions. We have to understand that whole enslavement process with that. But I want to welcome y'all here. I want to uh, say let's stay in contact. If you got a card. Yes. Because my wife is a mental health therapist. Yes. Uh, she has reached out <laughs> and does other things that our community can connect to. Okay. Vibrational sound therapy. Yeah. Reiki healing. She does comedic nice. Reiki healing reserved to our people only. Okay. You know, so there's a... A push of people, like you said, to want to destigmatize, mm -hmm. but at the same time embrace. Embrace it, yeah. What we've always been used for thousands of years, uh, calling on the spirits, using the ancestral mm -hmm. knowledge, using roots, using herbs, using meditation, because we invented all this stuff. Right. And But it's been, as my wife had to get out of the quote-unquote regular mental health thing, the therapist mm -hmm. field, because it was... What we discovered is all the real stuff that Africans use, you couldn't build for. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> but it was what our people were needing. Right. You know, uh, but yeah, at the same right. time, that's not to say the other pieces aren't valid. 
they are valid because people need to understand that it is once you get a diagnosis especially if somebody gives you the diagnosis mm -hmm. now you have to operate within that exactly and sometimes it might be dead on and so but a lot of times our people don't just get one opinion mm -hmm. and then that opinion is based upon some things that maybe not all the way true so you know as far as the mental health section you know what we call this black well-being Oh, because we understand that if I did say black mental health up on here, everybody would walk by it because <laughs> I, I ain't for me. So we go black well-being, black well-being. I appreciate that. Here's, here's a great book right here. Grieving while black. And we understand that it's not about a death process that we grieve. Sometimes we grieve relationships with people who mm -hmm. can't grow because yep. we got to do something else. Sometimes we grieve the old neighborhood. That we used to grow up with, but now it's just, ah, I can't go there no more. Can't. So we make these lifelong decisions about what we do, and sometimes that hangs on us. Mm. Like, we lost a love. Well, we did we lose something love. So books like that yeah. kind of help restir that. Why we feel this way? And if you don't know about Resma's book right now, this is the hottest book in America, The Quaking of America, right by Grandmother's Hands, Resma Minikin, uh, this book should change up things and how people work towards things because we can't just use our head anymore. Because even in ancient times, the good people led with their heart. So in ancient Kemet, most of the statues lead with the left foot because mm. here it is. Why does the military lead? Live! Because you, you lead with your heart first. You gotta be true and pure. They just take our information, take our knowledge and use it to their means, but we have to recapture that. So what Resma did, and say that up here and right here have to match. And there is such thing as a root chakra system because we all know a lot of that pain, a lot of that trauma gets trapped in our body yeah. and we don't do nothing with it. You're right. And it comes out in other ways. Sometimes we do some things that work. Pettiness. <laughs> but what we do, we don't talk. But I'm glad we had this conversation. <laughs> yes, thank and you. We can keep going, sis. Thank you.